Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, Legends. In today's episode, we are going to speak to someone who's been associated with the game of cricket for over 50 years. He's a former Sri Lanka captain and since retiring, he's been involved with the sport in several capacities. As a chairman of selectors, as a ma manager of the national cricket team, as a secretary of uh, the Board of Control for Cricket in Sri Lanka and also as the CEO of Sri Lanka Cricket from 2000 to 2003. Today my guest is Mr. Anurut Tentakon. Welcome to the show Mr. Tentakon. Good to be here. Yeah. Mr. Tentakon, I'd like to uh, start off with uh, your association with the sport. It's been uh, more than half a century. Uh, you held uh, several positions uh, after retiring. If you could just uh, talk us through the time that you've uh, served in various capacities. Yeah, it's a bit of a long uh, story, but uh, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Uh, yes, once I finished playing cricket, uh, I think I got on to um, a little bit of assisting juniors in cricket, and uh, uh, I think I was put in charge of uh, uh, picking a side to play in the first ever Junior World Cup in 1988, uh, which toured Australia. and. Uh, I think in that squad uh, we were able to pick players like Sanat Jayasurya, Ramesh Kalvita and Hathur Singh, uh, just to name a few who really made the top grade. Uh, thereafter, I got uh, involved in the board ad administration, served uh, as a member of the executive committee and uh, also, uh, have also I was elected as uh, the secretary. Uh, in Mr. Gamini Jisanayaka's second term, that was in 1994. And uh, uh, yeah, after, unfortunately, um, Mr. Gamini Jisanayaka met with an unfortunate uh, demise. Uh, thereafter, I finished my stint as secretary and uh, joined the Sri Lanka Cricket Foundation as its uh, CEO. Uh, and function there till from 95 to, to 2000 uh, and uh, in my capacity as CEO and I not only was involved in administration but went around the island and conducted uh, several coaching clinics uh, for especially for young cricketers and uh, through these coaching clinics we uh, unearthed talent and gave them uh, uh, cricketing scholarships by way of uh, giving further uh, training in cricket and also equip them with uh, the cricketing um, uh, equipment that they required. Uh, and uh, some of the chaps who were picked up uh, during these clinics was uh, Chamar Silva, uh, Parnavitana uh, and uh, also uh, uh, Bandara. They, they were people who came up from these cl clinics and made it a big in cricket. Taranga Parnitana and Malinga Bandara are yeah, the two Malinga Bandara. blokes that you are talking yeah. about. And uh, talking about uh, the pre-test era, yeah. uh, people consider you as one of the finest batsmen produced by the country and uh, a lot of them talk about the under 169 that you made in a first class match against India at the SSE. Uh, if you can recall that knock? Uh, yes, why not? Be, I think uh, it was one of my better knocks, I would say, if not the best. Uh, we, on the final day, we, it was a four-day unofficial test match. On the final day, we were um, uh, five wickets down, I think, and uh, we still had to wipe off uh, something like a 120 runs or so to uh, avert an innings defeat. Uh, so it was quite a uphill task for us when we started the day. But uh, I was able to hang in there and as the day progressed, uh, able to uh, collect some runs which uh, enabled uh, us to overall the deficit and set India uh, a, a target of 80 runs in the second innings which they made for the loss of four wickets. Um, but from the position we were and uh, the way we recovered, I think uh, it was quite an achievement. You've been there since the since Sri Lanka entered the international stage right from the start, 1975 World Cup, you were the captain of the side. And uh, the first 
ever game that Sri Lanka played. The one-day national was against the mighty West Indies. Not many teams wanted to play the, play the West Indies those days. Yeah. It was at uh, Old Trafford, 1975, your first game. Yes. Uh, bit of a tough moment? Certainly it was because uh, that day was a very cloudy, overcast day. Uh, in addition to that, the wicket also was rather green and uh, we were unfortunate to lose the toss and we were inserted and uh, playing uh, the West Indian fast bowling on a uh, day like that with the wicket also being green um, was tough and we just couldn't cope with it and we were bundled out for something like 80 runs which was uh, rather embarrassing. Not the kind of debut that you wanted, uh, you out for a duck of uh, Bernard Julian. Yes. Uh, actually, Bernard Julian uh, picked up the most amount of wickets in that game, I think five, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, uh, he was able to swing the ball in the air as well as off the wicket. And uh, it was tough tackling him as well as the other pace, pace bowlers. Then obviously that memorable game uh, at the Oval against Australia, where guys like Dulip and uh, Sunil Vettamuni put up a fantastic show followed by your efforts and that of uh, Mr. Michael Tissera. Uh, one of the uh, best remembered games in your career? Certainly, yeah, it was a memorable game because after the debacle against the West Indies, the uh, second game was against the Australians and we were coming up against a formidable uh, bowling attack. Actually, that was the best fast bowling combination we were up against in Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson. They were, Thompson especially was very quick and uh, we were determined to make amends for our debacle in Manchester and uh, fortunately for us that day it was bright and sunny and also the wicket was a good batting wicket and uh, Australia I think won the toss and uh, elected to bat first and those were 60 over games, the first ever World Cup was 60 over games in the 60 over games they posted 320 runs I think for the loss of 6 wickets or so and in our turn, uh, we got off to a fairly good start against that hostile pace attack. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, it was uh, Ranjit Fernando and Sunil Vettamuni who opened the batting. Uh, they gave us a fair start of about 40-50 runs. And uh, it was followed by Bandula Varnapura, who also got some runs. Uh, Dulip Mendes followed and he too uh, got into that and uh, was getting runs at a considerable pace when uh, uh, rate, uh, when unfortunately he was stuck by a bouncer from uh, trying to hook a bouncer from Jeff Thompson right on the forehead and uh, he just couldn't bat thereafter. Uh, fortunately it wasn't uh, um, a very bad injury although the ball stuck him very hard. He had to be carried off the field. Then and you walked in? Uh, I had to walk in after that. Uh, it took me some time to see that uh, Dudip was all right after he returned to the dressing room and it took me some time to get to the centre and people would have been wondering whether I was uh, coming in to bat or not after that. But I uh, managed to get in there and uh, uh, stick it out. Uh, and I must say that uh, the first over I faced off Diff Thompson, he had this slinging action which uh, really didn't give uh, the batsman much of a chance of picking the ball off his hand. And uh, the first time I faced him, I only saw the ball whizzing past my head. Fortunately, nothing uh, caught the head. Um, I was able to survive that first over and thereafter started uh, getting used to the pace and the wicket and managed to accumulate something like 46 runs and was associated with a fairly good partnership with uh, Michael Tissera. Then uh, from the other end, uh, you were able to see Sunil Vettamuni retiring at as well. That's right. When I uh, just after I went in, Sunil Vettamuni got hit by Thompson again on the instep and uh, he was uh, hobbling uh, in his crease, out of his crease in pain. And this Thompson uh, took the ball and tried to run him out at that stage. So that's the uh, sort of aggressive nature in which Australians played their cricket. Uh, Sunil too was unable to carry on and uh, I was joined in the centre by Michael and we managed to uh, hold fort 
and uh, I must say that we got a score of 270 for 4, I think, chasing that big target. And had it been for the injuries, we may have come closer to that target. The quality of Sri Lankan cricket, particularly the batsmen, uh, were on display in that inaugural World Cup itself, you think? Yeah, the, uh, we had some good uh, batsmen, uh, but the problem we had was uh, we didn't have much uh, experience in playing under English conditions. I mean, it was, I think, for uh, quite a lot of us, the first tour of England and the uh, swinging ball uh, due to the atmosphere there and also some greenish wickets at time uh, didn't enable us to adjust to it quickly enough and uh, we uh, found uh, difficulty in uh, coping with those conditions. But uh, having said that, I think we did well in the Australian game uh, and uh, also proved uh, to the cricketing world that we were also able to play some good cricket. Obviously, the golden moment of Sri Lankan cricket came in the next World Cup in the pre-test era when uh, Sri Lanka um, managed to beat India at Manchester in a World Cup game. There's fabulous Indian side as well. Um, Venkat as the captain, Bishan Singh Bedi, Sunil Gavaskar, Anushman Gaikwad, Kapil Dev, Dilip Pensaka, Mo uh, Mohindra Amarnath. Um, pretty pleased with what you guys came up with? Certainly, uh, because that was in '79. That, was, that match was at Old Trafford, uh, yes, so Manchester. Manchester. Uh, unfortunately, I got injured in the previous game against New Zealand and I couldn't play in the game. And uh, Bandula Varnapura stood in for me as captain and he did a wonderful job in steering the team uh, to a magnificent uh, victory. It really uh, was a good win against that uh, good Indian side. And there again, we proved uh, to the world that we were capable of uh, taking on good sides and on our day uh, beating them. How much do you think that particular win helped Sri Lanka to uh, eventually get st test status two years later? It certainly helped because uh, I think people began to realize the, we were able to compete at that level. Uh, and one of the problems uh, I think the ICC had in uh, giving us test status was that they felt that uh, infrastructure for international cricket wasn't good enough but I think the late Garmini Sunayaka gave them the assurance that the inf infrastructure also will be improved uh, if once they got test status and uh, I think the ICC uh, going by our performances uh, had to uh, give us test status and uh, once we got it, I think uh, we went from strength to strength. Unlike in 1975 where you went on an invitation, 1979 tournament was something where you had to qualify, yeah. uh, win the ICC trophy and then progress. Yeah. Uh, did that uh, by any sort put any pressure on you guys? Yeah, quite a lot of pressure in the sense uh, we were in a group where Israel yes. um, uh, had to play. And uh, due to politics, I think uh, we were asked not to play the game against Israel, so we had to forfeit points there. And in order to qualify for the, um, uh, the, the, the final of the, the, the ICC trophy, uh, we had to win all our balance matches. Uh, one game against Ireland was washed off. That was a put additional pressure. Uh, and also some of the games were played on just club uh, 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 grounds uh, and the pitches weren't all that good. So uh, I think uh, even a weaker side could, could have got the better of you if you uh, were not quite uh, there with your game on that day. So all, all these things uh, put a lot of pressure on us but we, were managed, to, we managed to pull through and uh, qualified for the final where we played Canada and won the ICC uh, trophy, which uh, ultimately qualified us to play in the bigger tournament, World Cup. And uh, the standout performers uh, during your era? The performances? Or the standout performers like uh, some of the finest players who played alongside you? Oh, I see. The players who played, uh, I think uh, initially it was uh, Michael Cesar who was a 
good batsman and also a very useful leg spin bowler. As for batting, uh, we had uh, uh, players like uh, Ranjit Fernando, uh, Sunil Vettamuni opening the innings. Ranjit Fernando was a keeper as well. And then uh, there was Varnapura, Dudit Mendis, uh, uh, myself, uh, and Tisara. So I think uh, that was the best available batting in Sri Lanka at that time. And uh, I think we proved uh, in the Australian game that we also could uh, match up to uh, good uh, bowling attacks. You spoke about Mr. Michael Tissera, you were the understudy to him uh, to take over the captaincy and all of a sudden, you know, I mean, when the captaincy was taken away from him and given it to you, was it a little bit difficult and perhaps embarrassing to see him uh, play under you? Uh, yeah, what really happened was uh, Michael, uh, when we toured Pakistan, he uh, wasn't uh, available due to work uh, pressures, I think. He didn't make himself available and then I was asked to lead the side and we, uh, uh, I led the side and we had a fairly good tour of Pakistan where in the second test match we came close to beating Pakistan, just failed short by 18 runs I think in that game. Uh, and uh, when we got back, uh, uh, the selectors decided to continue with me as the captain. but. Uh, I think uh, when it came to the first World Cup 75, I think uh, the, uh, the press and I think uh, the media especially uh, were, uh, you know, carrying out a campaign that I should stand down in favour of Michael as captain. And um, in fact, if they didn't carry out that campaign, I on my own uh, may have decided to step down in his favour. but. Once I carried out that campaign, I think I, I, I said to myself, no, I'm not uh, going to uh, sort of succumb to this kind of pressure and continued and I tried to, uh, with my batting, um, uh, be useful to the Sri Lankan side and prove that uh, I was also able to uh, uh, lead the side uh, successfully. You led the 1979 World Cup side and uh, two years later Sri Lanka were granted test status. Yeah. Do you regret uh, retiring a little bit early and you continued you would have gone on to become the first test captain? Uh, you see, uh, one makes decisions uh, on these things uh, depending on the situation at that particular time. And uh, when I decided to call it a day in 79, uh, I think uh, I was a family man with two uh, kids and uh, also uh, I was beginning to miss uh, work uh, quite regularly as a result of my cricketing engagement and um, I felt that had I uh, devoted uh, much more time to cricket I would have uh, not been able to uh, go up the ladder where my career at work was concerned and then I took the decision to really uh, say uh, goodbye to cricket. Sri Lanka played the inaugural test match in February 1982 and in October the same year some of the players went on the rebel tour to South Africa. Were you ever approached to be part of that uh, tour? Uh, not directly but there were indirect uh, approaches made, uh, but I emphatically said I was not interested and uh, probably that was the end uh, of uh, my going to South Africa. And you spoke about uh, retiring uh, at a stage uh, when you felt that you, know, I mean, you had other commitments to make, but did you ever feel that you know, I mean, there's still cricket left in you and you could have probably continued for a couple of more years? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I could have. I was just uh, 34 when I uh, retired. I probably could have continued for a couple of more years, uh, but which meant uh, I, I would have had to put in a lot of more um, work in the form of uh, you know practices and uh, even physical training. 
Uh, and uh, if that were the case, uh, I would have had once again to neglect uh, my family as well as uh, some of the work I was doing for Ceylon Tobacco Company. So that was uh, why I decided to call it quits uh, in 1979 after the World Cup tour. How do you rate some of the spinners uh, that played alongside you? There was Abu Fuad, Andrew the Polonavita, Neil Chanmugam, Anastasia De Silva. They were all very fine spinners, you see. And uh, I think uh, most of them uh, really weren't very great turners of the ball, but they were able to uh, sort of work on the batsman through uh, several variations in flight and pace. Uh, and also while maintaining uh, line and length. So all of them, all of those uh, old spinners were very good. Uh, one that comes to my mind uh, is uh, Sahabandu, uh, who could drop the ball on a coin, I think. Uh, six balls, if he bowl, he would be able to drop the ball. He was so accurate. So uh, he, he, he really would have been a very fine spinner had he been bowling in this era. This was a time where there was a fine rivalry between Maharajas and Ceylon Tobacco Company. That's right, yes, yes. Uh, and who were the that, players involved, the Maharajas and uh, CTC? Maharajas had a good side. Uh, it was Siddhartha Vittamuni, um, uh, Dulip Mendes, uh, I think the name of people, Ranil Abhinayaka, uh, and some others who. Ashantani uh, uh, Rasul Hama. All of them uh, were in that side, and we had uh, people like uh, Bandula Varnapura, myself, uh, uh, Ranjan Madhugal. Uh, Ranjan was la later on, yeah, but uh, Amresh, Rajaratnam, uh, and uh, all of these guys, and uh, both teams uh, were balanced sides and good sides, and when it came to uh, playing against each other, there was uh, quite a bit of rivalry to get the better of each other. Uh, coming back to the spinners that you spoke, uh, modern day we see the ball turning, you know, I mean, on the first day of a test match before lunch. What would you think these spinners of your era would have done had the conditions been the same those days? Yeah, they certainly would have uh, posed uh, problems to um, uh, most batsmen on the, uh, under these conditions. Uh, but I, 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 I don't think uh, we uh, are on the correct track by, you know, um, offering wickets which uh, start turning from day one of a test match. Probably day three uh, or day four and five, um, the ball turning is all right. But uh, if you produce wickets just to suit uh, spin bowlers, uh, then it becomes a struggle in the middle for the batsman. And uh, the uh, the game become become very attractive because the batsmen are unable to play shots. They are only thinking of keeping their wickets intact by defending. Uh, so they can't play with any degree of certainty. Uh, and as a result, uh, when you give a turner on day one, the game is over by about the third day or early on the fourth day. So uh, uh, really. What happens is uh, you miss out, uh, the TV companies miss out on uh, telecasting and revenue coming in through the telecast. So that can have a bad effect uh, on, on the finances of the game also if you give wickets which don't last the full distance. You talk about the finances of the game because you are very well versed uh, on that arena since you were the CEO of the board for three years. A very interesting period uh, between 2000 to 2003 uh, when Sri Lanka hosted the Champions Trophy yeah. and it was called the ICC knockout those days. Yeah. And also, it was also the period where the national cricket team went on to win 10 consecutive test matches under the captaincy of Sanat Jayasuri. Now, we all know about the positives, but what are some of the tough things that you had to deal with uh, during your time as a CEO? Yeah, uh, although, uh, you know, uh, we were winning and uh, we had a good run, uh, especially where the finances were con concerned, uh, we had to uh, really control it uh, uh, very prudently because uh, cricket is an uh, expensive game. You got to spend quite a lot on uh, 
upkeep of uh, grounds and then also um, when you get foreign teams coming in, uh, putting them up in hotels and things like that. Uh, because there wasn't uh, much uh, uh, money uh, coming into uh, our coffers uh, until we won the 1996 World Cup. And then, of course, when we played uh, sides like India and England uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, we got good TV income which helped us really to sustain the game. But uh, at times, we, uh, when there weren't uh, incoming to us, which brought us uh, income through TV rights, uh, uh, it was a struggle to, uh, to uh, sustain the uh, facilities that we were providing for the cricketers, as well as improving the infrastructure facilities. You've uh, managed quite a few cricket teams, uh, Mr. Naport. Uh, some of the all-time greats of the Sri Lankan uh, cricket uh, have been uh, part of those squads, whether it be Arvind, Kumar Sangakara, Putaya Muralidharan, Sanat Jayasurya. How is how, it to sort of uh, deal with these players and uh, if you can relate your experiences? Yeah, when I managed the Sri Lanka team, Arvind had finished playing. Uh, it was Kumar, Mahela, um, uh, Sanat Jayasurya and crowd who were uh, holding fort at that time. Uh, well. Uh, you, you you had to treat them, uh, respect their ability as cricketers and uh, deal with them in that fashion. But at the same time, uh, you had to uh, ensure that you maintain uh, discipline and uh, also uh, see that they remain fit by uh, sort of keeping to uh, good hours uh, during uh, the evenings. and. Uh, also uh, training hard, so um, that was uh, emphasized to the players and uh, I think uh, because of that they also uh, followed those instructions and uh, that was why we were able to probably get into uh, the World Cup final uh, in uh, 2011, uh, yeah that's right, 2011. 2011 World Cup was a big disappointment for all the Sri Lankans. Uh, the team came so close. You think um, had some of those catches been taken and uh, perhaps, perhaps the stumping had been taken, uh, Sri Lanka would have pulled through, especially having dismissed both Sachin and Seva early on in the innings? Uh, yes, certainly at one stage of the Indian innings, uh, we were in control, especially when we got Shevag and uh, Tendulkar out. Uh, quite cheaply and uh, soon after the, each other. Uh, but I think uh, thereafter Gambhir uh, came in and got something like 90 runs and uh, maybe when he was about 30 there was a, a chance which we uh, failed to hold on to in the outfield. Uh, that gave him a life and he went on to make uh, 90 runs. And uh, still, uh, we were in the game till uh, mm -hmm. uh, Captain Dhoni came to the wicket and took control and uh, steered the game in, in India's favour. Uh, I think, uh, in retrospect, thinking back, uh, we were handicapped for that game because uh, Angelo Matthews, a key component of our team, uh, both as uh, batsman and bowler got injured and he was unable to play in the final which uh, upset the balance of the team. Uh, if that had not happened, we probably would have been in a better position to uh, win the trophy. Still a fabulous campaign throughout the tournament. Sri Lanka played outstanding cricket and even in the final took India to the last bit. Yes, yes, we gave them. A good uh, run for their money, although we lost finally uh, due to that uh, brilliant effort by Dhoni. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the thing is, uh, when you come so close and uh, miss it, it's always a, a disappointment. I'd like to talk about uh, the test match in Durban in 2011, where Sri Lanka recorded uh, the maiden test win. What are your memories of that uh, game? Yes, I think uh, we had lost the 
first game there again very badly inside three in, days in Joburg yeah and uh, then we had to pick up our game uh, in order to uh, show South Africa that we were up for a fight and we could uh, play some competitive cricket so we had a very uh, uh, useful and uh, what would I say stern uh, discussion uh, after the game uh, about what went wrong and what we should do to um, pick up our game in the second test. And uh, I think uh, the um, boys performed wonderfully well in that game after having lost the first game uh, badly. Uh, and uh, both the batsmen and uh, also the bowlers did their job and we picked up our catchers and uh, we were able to win that test match which was the first ever win in South Africa. But what was the turning point, Mr. Nepal, for Sri Lanka to lose so badly in the first game and uh, then to come back and uh, bring in a couple of new players? Dinesh Nandimal was making his debut in that game. Yeah. Uh, then to completely dominate uh, the South Africans. What do you think was the turning point? Yeah, the turning point uh, was that uh, first and foremost we got runs on the board. I think uh, uh, the Tilan Samaravira came up with a hundred. Dinesh Chandimal on debut got a fifty. Uh, yeah, and that way I think we managed to register a score of about three hundred runs. I can't remember the exact score uh, in the first innings. And uh, when it came to South Africa's uh, turn to bat, uh, we bowled uh, extremely well. I think the spinners uh, did the job for us. No, uh, actually it was Velagedra who started the. Uh, the debacle for the uh, South Africans, uh, followed up by some other spinners, and we were able to uh, get a lead of uh, over 100 runs in the first innings, and then in the second innings too, uh, despite a uh, good fight back by South Africa, we were able to uh, set them a target of uh, something close to 300 runs, and then the spinners came into their act, especially Rangana. Herat who picked up five wickets on that occasion and uh, we were able to bowl them out uh, winning the match by nearly 100 runs which uh, I think was a very good achievement considering that we had gone down badly in the first test match. Jack Kali's got a pair in that game and that's his uh, first ever pair in test cricket and in the next game he was uh, dropped when he was on not in Cape Town and then he went on to get a double hundred. Yeah. Think had that catch been uh, taken, Sri Lanka would have gone on to create history by winning the first ever Test Series in South Africa? Uh, it's very difficult to say that, but Kalis is a, a very good player and you, if you give him the second chance, obviously he's going to make you pay for it, which he did by getting almost a double hundred, oh, no. I think. He got a double hundred and uh, ran up a formidable first innings total. And uh, from there onwards, the pressure was on us because uh, on the Cape Town uh, wicket, uh, I think their pace bowlers were able to uh, extract uh, a lot of pace and uh, seam. Uh, and uh, we, we succumbed to the pressure. Mr. Anwar, it's always nice chatting to you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, welcome. It's a pleasure talking to you.